Brooklyn Independent Television. As you've just seen, there's a lot more to a thorough eye exam than meets the eye. Despite what a lot of people think, it's not just meant to provide you with a prescription for glasses. An eye exam can indicate cataracts, glaucoma, even diabetes. And once again, here to discuss all this and to tell me how I did on my exam is Dr. Douglas Arrow, Chair of Ophthalmology at SUNY Downstate Medical Center. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks. So what I want to know is I'm very happy that I finally got to get my comprehensive eye exam. I want to know how I did. So your eye exam overall was pretty good. However, there was one abnormality that we picked up, which is uh, potentially a very early stage of glaucoma. So we're going to do some additional testing. And I do want to point out that it's essential to come back for those tests, including a visual field. And, uh, and then we'll make a, a proper determination of whether or not you have it, have it or not. I certainly don't have any symptoms, but I will certainly follow up. And that's what we all have to do when something is found, follow up. I'm just wondering why it is that people don't go and get a routine eye exam more. Firstly, in our borough, we have a lot of patients that are uninsured, no health insurance. So for many of those patients, they may only use the emergency room for acute problems, and they're not going to seek out the emergency room for an eye exam. So that is one real barrier in, in the borough of Brooklyn. And they don't know how to look up the places that give eye exams free, free of charge, like, like you all do sometimes. Exactly. We actually will take care of... Uh, any patient regardless of the ability to pay whether or not they have insurance or not. And I think even a bigger factor is that some of our patients go to get eyeglasses filled. Right. So they go for their prescription, they're told their vision is okay on the chart, they get a new pair of glasses. When you say the chart, you mean when you just say E and whatever those letters are? That's what you mean on the chart? Exactly. So okay. they'll, they'll read a visual chart in the store They'll get a new pair of glasses, and they'll, they'll equate that with a new uh, complete eye examination. And the, the problem with that is a patient can be 20-20, see those tiny letters on the chart, and actually have a series of eye diseases even with 20-20 vision. So the take-home message is to get a complete eye exam even if you've gone just for glasses. The other point that I want to make early on is what the three most common conditions are in the populations that you see here in Brooklyn, uh, what are the conditions most responsible for people losing uh, the ability to see? Probably the most common is cataract. Cataract is where the lens of the eye, just like the lens of the camera, becomes cloudy and interferes with vision. And it can be anywhere from mild to severe. The good news about cataract is we're pretty good as ophthalmic surgeons taking out cataracts, doing an operation, and replacing it with an artificial lens. And once that's done, that's a problem solved. That's correct. In 99% of cases, surgery is successful and the problem is resolved and the patient sees sometimes much better than they've seen in the last 5, 10, 15 years. Okay, you mentioned glaucoma. Glaucoma is, a, uh, is, is called the silent thief of sight, and uh, with good reason. Glaucoma can actually take away the center part of your vision very late in the d disease, very late in the disease. So you can actually be 20-20 with glaucoma and have end-stage glaucoma and not know it. So, so end-stage glaucoma, you can have end-stage disease and have 20-20 vision. Exactly correct, and that's the problem with the disease. You, uh, if you go for just glasses, you can have lost most of your optic nerve function, which glaucoma affects, and still be 20-20 until very late in the disease. And then at the very end stage, it takes away your central vision, and you basically can't see. And the problem is, it's irreversible. Whatever you lose in glaucoma, you can't get back. Now, the question is, how often should adults without symptoms get a comprehensive eye exam? I would say at least annually. 
Okay. I think it's important, even if you don't have symptoms, the average age of diagnosis of glaucoma in the United States is presently 52. So I think you have to get your eyes examined. Again, many of these diseases don't present with symptoms early on. For that matter, macular degeneration, the leading cause of blindness in the United States over the age of 65, in many cases is asymptomatic early on. What age should people start getting uh, the annual eye exam? So that's a great question. We actually recommend, and the American Academy of Ophthalmology recommends, children at age four start getting a complete examination. If the exam is normal at age four and there are no problems with the birth and no prematurity when the baby was born, two or three years later is probably sufficient. But adults should get examined every year. And again, when we say examinations, we mean a comprehensive eye exam, eye drops, dilated pupils, looking at the retina and the optic nerve closely to make sure we don't miss anything that could be lurking inside the eye. Now on to diabetes, which is as a, a practicing internist, uh, when I was a practicing internist, that's what I saw a lot of in Brooklyn. That's responsible for a lot of visual changes. So talk to us about that. So diabetes is, is maybe the second leading cause of blindness in the United States. Here in the borough of Brooklyn, we have many, many patients that have already suffered irreversible blindness. One of the reasons is they present, again, late in the disease. So we have patients that have had diabetes for a number of years, haven't gotten a comprehensive eye exam, and end up with diseases that are not easy to manage in the later stages. The good news about diabetes is if you get examined early on in the diagnosis, right after you get that diagnosis, the eye exam can, can really help you at that stage determine early treatments and, and manage the disease. And I think if you get managed regularly with diabetes, in many, many cases, the vast majority, you won't lose vision. That is a message that I want our audience to really take away because so many diabetics suffer in stage losses because they don't get treated early. But it's not only a message for our patients, it's a message for our clinicians as well. So you bring up an excellent point. Our internists, our primary care docs need to get their doctors for annual screening exams. It's standard of care in 2012. Every diabetic gets at least an annual exam. We as ophthalmologists try to be real doctors too, like the internists, and we tell our patients to try to keep their hemoglobin A1C, that measurement that gives us some idea of their diabetes control, under, under wraps, and that often can help us manage the eye manifestations. Many patients with advanced kidney disease can end up with diabetic retinopathy. And the way patients generally lose vision from diabetes is when they have the, man the disease manifesting itself in, in the, the back of the eye. Yes. We have a lot of things that I would like to cover, but there's one thing that I want to ask you about because it's been in the news recently, and that is the association between eye disease and daily aspirin. And I, we don't have time to go into great detail, but I would like you to explain a little bit about wet macular degeneration and the association of daily aspirin since so many people are on daily aspirin. So macular degeneration in the United States is the leading cause of blindness over 65. It comes in two major forms, the dry form, which is very common, and the wet form, which is less common, but leads to more visual disability. They did an excellent study out of Europe looking at almost 5,000 patients. The old patients were over 65. They separated them out into daily aspirin users and non-daily aspirin users. And it was noted that there was a 4% incidence of the wet form of macular degeneration in the daily aspirin users versus 2% in the non-daily aspirin users. We don't necessarily think that aspirin causes macular degeneration, but it is an association that was recognized and needs definitely more evaluation in future studies. So you're not, we would say to the people who are on daily aspirin, don't, for example, for heart disease or 
um, other reasons. Don't quit your daily aspirin without going to talk to your ophthalmologist and your internist. Absolutely. I would say if you need it for your heart, if you need it for the prevention of stroke, if you've had a stroke in the past and you need the aspirin, continue taking the aspirin. And then that leads into a subject that you and I have talked about previously, which is what about recommending certain uh, supplements for page for our patients and in well we can't go into that today even though we um, our discussions we were eye to eye on our discussion or mind to mind I really hope that with all the other things that we need to discuss about the eye that you will come back at a future time to have a discussion with us there's so many things to take to take into consideration when you're taking care of the most one of the most precious senses that we have, namely the eye. I'd be happy to come back and I can discuss it at length. Thank you very much for being here and we look forward to that. Thank you, Dr. Sweeney. Become a fan on Facebook. Like Brooklyn Independent Television. 